This video is for two groups. One, you've done filament style printing and you're not sure whether to jump over to resin printing. Or two, you're brand new to 3D printing, you have no idea what style, make, model to start with. If you're not in one of those two boats, you won't get anything new from this video. You can close it, go watch something else. Now, over the years, I have turned down thousands maybe tens of thousands of dollars in sponsorship proposals because the stuff either just didn't interest me or it wasn't directly relevant to my channel, that is, make things and play games. I remember one particular case, I really savored that moment telling them to get <laughs> And long time viewers will know that I don't do this kind of stuff very often, but in this case, I feel so strongly and am so excited about this product that I wanted to do a dedicated video about it instead of integrating it as a side note into a larger project. So that said, let's begin. I hated 3D printing. I've owned several FDM or filament style printers over the years and all of them have some nuance or quirk that's just been insurmountable. On my current printer, I've invested over 20 hours trying to get it dialed in and optimized, getting working right, but still the results are pretty awful. Look at this stringing, for example. I've tried different nozzle temperatures from 170 to 240, tried a wide range and different combinations of Z retraction speeds and distances. I've changed the jerk and accelerations. I've replaced all the fans. I've replaced all the gears. I've replaced the nozzle three times because it keeps clogging up. I replaced the entire hot end. I've tried different slicer software packages. I've tried different filament brands. I've tried the canned profiles that are made specifically for my printer model, such as the one from Fat Dragon Games. I've tried printing indoors, I've tried printing outdoors, and no matter what I do, I get stringing, I get ghosting, I get ugly results. Now, all of that was part and parcel with the hobby of 3D printing, but it doesn't end there. Oh no, then you get to go onto the online support groups like Facebook and see people printing results with your exact printer getting gorgeous results, proving that there is absolutely a luck of the draw aspect to this. Every single 3D printer is unique and some of them are just lemons. So, I hated 3D printing until I tried resin. The Anycubic Photon Mono. It was packaged extremely well, solid, nothing damaged, and I literally had no idea what to expect. I knew nothing about resin printers before opening this box, so I was pleasantly surprised to not be overwhelmed by lots of assembly needed. I mean, I am a Lego kid, I do love assembly, but at this chapter of my life, I just don't have time. The leveling process was well explained and easy to perform, unlike the hell that is those three or four spring-loaded dials on filament printer plates. So the principle behind it is this, you have a vat with a clear bottom and you pour in your resin. Then the LED screen on the machine, which throws off only UV light, cures the resin layer by layer, and that big hunk of silver metal above, that's the build plate, it gradually raises upwards, so your print actually comes out upside down. While that's printing, let's crack open the wash and cure station. This equipment isn't totally necessary, but definitely makes life easier. With resin prints, as soon as they're done, they're still covered in a thin layer of liquid resin, so first you need to wash them. A variety of cheap chemicals will work for this. I found a jug of denatured alcohol for 10 bucks at my local hardware store. So this machine is awesome. Just set it to wash, dial in the time, and press the button. Here's the test print on the USB stick that came straight out of the box. And here it is being washed. Mesmerizing. After that, you can remove the tub of cleaner, put on this platter, no screws needed, it just keys right on, and then change the mode to cure. See, at this point, the resin is mostly cured, might not be totally in some spots, might be a little flexible, so you just want to make sure you blast it with UV light. You could put it under the sun for a while, that would work, or you put it on this platter, dial in a couple minutes, and press go. When it's done, the print is smooth and consistent. Note that this test print right here was my very first attempt. Literally, plug and play, pull the machines out of their boxes, plug them in, and press go. And this is what came out. So far, so good. So I got confident and tried to print a miniature, specifically a Mind Flayer. And look what happened. Like Icarus and the Sun. Might have been a fluke, maybe not. So this is where I googled for help. And the first search result is what ended up being the issue. Layer exposure time, three seconds instead of two. 
I also re-performed the leveling process for good measure. So resin printers aren't 100% plug and play. There is still some, quote, dialing in that you have to do, but the number of parameters to care about is literally like one one hundredth that of a filament printer, far less complex. Anyway, after that, I was off to the races, printing miniatures like a fool. This resin printer runs for about 250 bucks, and the wash and cure station, which again is totally optional, is around 130 for a total of $380. So I decided to pit this against my dialed-in $500 CR-10S filament printer. This model is from the One Page Rules Patreon. They've just celebrated their 7-year anniversary. They maintain several rule sets, including my favorite Grimdark Future, for which I've produced many battle reports. Anyway, this is one of hundreds of 3D models they've released, and I chose it because it's challenging. It's got lots of bridges in it, lots of tiny details such as rivets, and it's got these small protrusions like the feather and the spikes on the crossbow. So I queued them up and the race was on. About two and a half hours for each print. And remember, the CR-10S has undergone at least 20 hours of maintenance, calibrations, and experimenting to arrive at this quality. After being sprayed with a cheap gray primer, I think these results speak for themselves. Overall smoothness, ability to render very tiny details, I mean, I feel kind of silly here being so late to the game, but maybe you're like me, you're a holdout. I can tell you, if you want to print miniatures for your tabletop gaming, resin printing is the way to go. Remember the Mind Flayer layer a couple weeks ago? All of those miniatures, except one, were printed with this very resin printer. I could not be happier. And the bundled stock slicer software from Photon works great. No frills, agile performance, good to go. One final note I will make, the Photon Mono, the one that I'm using, is perfect for doing tabletop miniatures like this, but for any sort of larger scale product, you're gonna wanna consider going with a model that has a larger build plate. This one is pretty small. That's it, enough said. Is resin printing worth it? Yes, it is light years ahead of filament, and if you're on the fence or thinking you might be interested in it, the answer is yes, you will not be disappointed. Thanks for watching, thank you to Anycubic, I am Wylock, make things and play games.